Hi everyone. A while ago I was asked by a friend if I could correct some lenses for him. The lenses are part of a triplet and together they form an optical correction element for a telescope. The lenses are 90 mm in diameter and every lens has specific surface radii. They are also made of different types of glass. Now, according to the owner, he could not get the lenses to perform well inside his telescope and he thought that something had gone wrong during lens centering. What is meant by lens centering and how this is done in practice is the subject of this video. As a telescope mirror maker I made many different mirrors, but only very few lenses. And the main reason is that a lens is so much more difficult to make than, let's say, a first surface mirror. In the case of a first surface mirror, you can focus all your efforts on just one optical surface, which is the front reflector. And in most cases, the exact radius of the surface is not even very critical. So making a mirror for, for example, a Newtonian telescope is relatively easy as a do-it-yourself project with very basic tools. However, if you make a lens, there are two surfaces to consider which have to be a very nicely spherical and basically flawless and of exactly the right curvature. Now, in addition, there are also specific tolerances on the thickness and on the lens diameter. Also, there's this parameter called lens wedge, which I will discuss in a minute. So in total, all these aspects make that a good lens is not easy to make without special equipment. Let's focus a little closer on the concept of lens wedge. The wedge is the angle that describes the difference between the smallest and the largest dimension of a lens edge. A very well centered lens has an identical edge thickness all around and has a wedge angle of almost zero. It is important to keep the wedge angle low if we want to correctly fit a lens into an optical tube. Lenses are generally mounted inside an optical tube by holding them against a well-defined rim at one of the spherical surfaces. And by choosing the lens diameter such that the lens cannot slide around too much on this rim, we can prevent the lens from tilting. The lens is held in place with a threaded ring, which can generally accommodate for a slight amount of wedge. However, a lens with a large wedge cannot be held correctly in an optical tube and can have various positioning errors. Lens centering is the method that is used to minimize lens wedge. Most lens systems consist of several lenses, so you want each individual lens to be centered correctly. Basically, we want all the lenses to align automatically when placed into an optical tube, without any need for correcting the orientation of each individual lens. The maximum allowed wedge angle for a lens is generally specified in arc minutes, or even arc seconds. For basic quality lenses, the wedge should be lower than, let's say, 5 arc minutes, whereas high precision optics can require a maximum wedge of less than 15 arc seconds, so about 20 times more accurate. The accuracy value originates from the tolerance analysis and can actually vary per lens within an optical system. Lenses are generally made in bulk, because making a good lens requires special tooling and machinery. So you have to somehow justify the manufacture of the tooling and all the machine adjustments. And because they are manufactured in bulk, there's also loads of surplus on the market. Sometimes you can buy high quality lenses for only a few dollars per piece, even with anti-reflection coatings. So even in the case that you're able to make your own lenses because you happen to have the right equipment, it's generally not worthwhile the effort. So why did I take on this lens centering challenge anyway? Well, a few years ago I bought a lens centering machine at an auction. It's a low LZ80 from the early 1980s. It's been in my workshop for several years, just eating up floor space. I wasn't really using it until about a year ago. I got several orders to make special optical windows. But so far I had never used it for its actual purpose, so I figured this was the perfect project as a test case. Unfortunately, when I bought the machine, it came without the centering cups, which are required to hold the lens during the centering process. So basically, I have to make new cups for every lens diameter that I want to process. Also, the machine was missing its laser and camera unit. 
The centering machine performs the centering procedure in a semi-automated way. So you place the lens in a centering cup and then optically align it with the rotation of the machine axis using a laser and a camera. And when it is aligned, you clamp it tightly between two cups and then you press the start button. And what follows is a sequence of movements of two fast spinning diamond wheels which create the edges on the lens. Since the machine was built before CNC became mainstream, the movements of the diamond wheels are controlled by a purely mechanical controller. The controller consists of a rotating steel axis that has notches and switches mounted on it. And these control the movements of the diamond grinding wheels and the opening and closing of valves, for example, uh, for cooling water and compressed air, etc. It's a bit like the mechanical clocks used in older washing machines uh, that execute the washing programs. Now you can change the total processing time by using a gearbox to change the rotation speed of the axis. And micrometer controls limit the movements of the diamond wheels to their exact positions. This all might look quite impressive, but the machine is actually highly unpractical. Basically, there are too many adjustments for every degree of freedom. And this makes the correct setup procedure very complex. According to the manual, setting it up requires up to 58 individual adjustment steps. But before we dive deeper into technology, let's take a step back. What exactly is the optical axis of a lens? Well, for a single lens with two spherical surfaces, it's actually straightforward. The optical axis is the path along which the light moves through the lens in a straight line. In practice, this means that the light should cross both surfaces perpendicularly. And in other words, the optical axis is actually the line that connects the two center points of the surface radii. Now for a lens with two spherical surfaces, lens centering is actually quite simple in theory. We place the lens in a rotating cup and slide it around so that the top surface is symmetrically aligned with respect to the axis of rotation. Now, as you can see in this figure, the bottom lens surface remains in the same position during the alignment, so it is completely insensitive to movement. And in this way we can independently align the top surface. And once we have achieved this, we fix the position of the lens in the cup and then machine the edges while using the same rotation that we used uh, during the alignment. However, in order for this to work, the edge of the cup supporting the lens has to be very round and very well centered uh, to the rotation axis. Otherwise, the bottom side of the lens is not centered correctly and uh, we can never get, make a good lens. To align the top surface correctly, we shine a laser beam at the lens and look at either the refracted beam in transmission or look at the reflection from the top lens surface. Let me explain the laser alignment in a little more detail for the case where we use reflection because this is the most sensitive configuration. Now, light is reflected by the top lens surface and ends up on a CCD sensor. If the optical axis of the lens is not correctly centered with respect to the rotation, the laser spot on the CCD will not be stationary but draw circles. So the aim of the alignment is to minimize the movement of the laser beam. And by the way, the laser does not have to be exactly in the center of the lens. Instead, we only have to focus on minimizing the circular motions in the beam. Let's have a look at the practical side now and how I got the machine back to operational. I started out by mounting a green diode laser where once had been the much larger helium neon laser. Now the light of the laser passes a small optical focusing module which allows for focusing the beam on the CCD into a tiny spot, even after it's been reflected back from the curved lens surface. Next, the beam is reflected downwards through a beam splitter into the hollow axis of the spindle that holds the lens. And when the reflected beam returns from the lens surface, it passes through the beam splitter again, but in this case is reflected towards a CCD camera. Now the camera is connected to a PC and on the screen we can study the movement of the laser spot in very fine detail. The size of the current lenses required the manufacture of fairly large cups. The centering machine contains two kinds of thread, right-handed for the bottom cup and left-handed for the top cup. So I used two different tabs to accurately make these two thread types in the cups. 
I also use these thread tabs to hold the cups in the lay and center them as well as possible during turning. Now my main challenge in making the cups accurately enough was to center the position of the edge as accurately as possible to the rotation of the centering machine axis. Let's say within 10 microns for this project. And because I have a very old and crappy lay, I could not reach this kind of accuracy. So I used a trick and uh, used the centering machine itself to make the edges very accurate. For this I mounted a very solid and adjustable contraption with a milling bit to the machine. So I actually used the centering machine itself as a lay. And in this way I could get the centering of the cup edges down to the required accuracy of 10 microns. Every once in a while I have a project that ends quite unexpectedly and this is actually one of them. So the machine was now operational and I mounted the cups in place. At that point I realized that my machine was also the ideal instrument to measure the current eccentricity of the lenses. So that was what I did first. It turned out that for all three lenses the mechanical axis defined by the lens edges was only between 10 and 25 microns away from the optical axis. So I calculated the wedge for the lenses and it resulted in 1.3 arc minutes as a maximum value, which is actually 4 to 5 times better than required for standard grade optics. By doing some more tests I also found out that this is very close to the maximum accuracy of the machine. So centering the lenses was actually pretty useless at this point. So I told the owner that the reason for the poor performance of the triplet should be found in something else, maybe in the construction of the optical tube. As I mentioned before, it is extremely important where and how the lenses are held inside the tube. And there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So he checked some of the dimensions and sure enough, he found that a spacer ring between two lenses did have thickness variations of more than 100 microns. And also the rim in the tube was not round at all. Now both these aspects can cause a serious flaw in the optical performance. Anyway, end of project so far. I have a working centering machine, high accuracy cups. I'm loaded up with knowledge and now I don't have any lenses to center. Well, at least I learned a few things again. <laughs>